Tonight, CNN is getting a closer look at Israeli military operations in Gaza. CNN reported from Gaza under Israel Defense Forces escort at all times and as a condition for journalists to embed with the IDF, media outlets must submit footage filmed in Gaza to Israeli military for review. CNN did not submit its script to the IDF and had editorial control over the final report. Let's bring in CNN's Oren Lieberman. He's joining us live from Tel Aviv right now. Uh, Oren, tell us what you saw. Well, first, it's nearly impossible to get into Gaza to report. You can't get in from the Israeli side as a reporter or from the Egyptian side. So the chance to see what was happening was given to us by the IDF, who took us in with a tank about a mile deep into Gaza to see what was happening on the ground. Not only the progress they say they're making, but also the challenges they face in a war that is very much hot. Through the breach, we enter northern Gaza at the Erez border crossing. The land here, once fertile farmland, is barren, and the trees that might have provided enemy cover destroyed. In the distance, smoke from an Israeli airstrike is a stark reminder that this is day 34 of a war that may stretch much longer. On Thursday, the IDF chief of staff and the head of the country's internal security service entered Gaza and promised strength through cooperation. Everyone is doing everything, said General Herzi Alevi, just so you can be as strong as possible. Along our path in northern Gaza, the signs of civilian life have given way to the constant hum of drones and the distant echoes of artillery. Our time with the IDF began at the coordination base for the border crossing, the first international media to visit the site. The terror attack on October 7th hit hard here. The scars of machine gun fire and RPGs still visible. The base was mostly empty on the holiday, but not entirely. The IDF says nine soldiers were killed here and three kidnapped. It took 12 hours for Israel to regain control of the base. Now it's one of the main gates to Gaza. <laughs> A month into the war, more than 10,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks on Gaza, according to the Hamas-controlled Palestinian Health Ministry there. The IDF says 35 Israeli soldiers have been killed in the Strip since the start of the incursion. The October 7th attack by Hamas in Israel killed more than 1,400 people, mostly civilians. We stop at an overlook near the town of Jabalia. One of the things uncovered here on this hill near Jabalia is a meeting point of three different tunnels. And you can see if you take a look, that's one, two, three. They came together here and it let Hamas move underground quickly below the feet and out of sight. Colonel Tal, the tank commander, says there were many explosives here. There were many trenches. There were a lot of weapons and ammunition. We found here a storage site with many explosives against tanks, RPGs. Even from a distance, the scale of the destruction is stunning. Apartment buildings, homes, neighborhoods decimated. Colonel Tal says the area is almost completely evacuated. We don't see civilians in our eyes. We see sometimes terrorists, but the majority of civilians haven't been here in a while. They've all gone south in the direction of the heart of the Strip. As we talk, we hear rocket fire and see the trails of the launches, triggering red alerts in Ashdod. After about 90 minutes inside northern Gaza, we make our way out, hugging the border wall for safety. Even here, so close to the exit, we stop briefly so the dust clears and we can make sure the way ahead is safe. In the distance, once again, the smoke from another strike. The IDF spokesperson said the ground operation in Gaza will only deepen, as Israel said it has largely encircled Gaza City and is moving towards the heart of the city in its ground operation. Wolf, I also spoke with the tank commander about the humanitarian corridor that we've talked so much about earlier today, and he said they're aware of the humanitarian corridor. It's not his job to coordinate it, but he knows when it is and where it is. And even in the middle of a war, he knows you don't shoot in that direction, even as the war rages around them in other parts. Oren Lieberman in Tel Aviv for us. Oren, thanks for that report. And joining me now to discuss all the news out of the Middle East, the National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, retired Admiral John Kirby. John, thanks so much for joining us. First, I want to get to Israel's daily four-hour pauses that are now being reported in northern Gaza to allow civilians to flee south. How will these pauses actually work? 
And have the Israelis fully committed to them? They have fully committed to them. Uh, and the way it's going to work is about three hours before the pauses will begin, the Israelis will, through a variety of means, uh, notify civilians living in northern Gaza that the pause is going to start and here's when, and, and uh, also advise on the, the safest corridor, the safest passes, passage out. They've added now a second safe passage corridor, humanitarian corridor, they call it, uh, out of northern Gaza along the coast road. So that's, that's one more than they had before over just the last few days. Now, this is a step in the right direction, Wolf. I mean, this could help reduce civilian casualties by giving people uh, the confidence uh, and the time uh, to move out of harm's way and not find themselves in the crossfire between Hamas and the Israeli Defense Forces. But, John, even with these uh, brief pauses, is there really anywhere in Gaza that's uh, safe for Palestinian civilians? Uh, and we're told almost half of them are children. Well, Hamas is placing those children and those families in harm's way by tunneling under their apartment complexes and using their hospitals and schools as, as command bunkers. Hamas is placing these civilians deliberately and, and directly uh, in harm's way in between the IDF and, and Hamas. And so these safe corridors and these pauses this breathing space and time for people to get out uh, should help alleviate some of the anxiety and the worry uh, that so many innocent Palestinians are, are feeling every day in, in North Gaza.